darkness, my God, that is who you are.
Good morning, Community Family Church and all our friends watching with us on media. This is a besonders wonderlijke naweek. This is ons paas naweek. Ons is so dankbaar for what Jesus for ons gedoen het op die kruis, maar ook dat hy opgestaan het. En dit is ons groot feestviering, Jesus het opgestaan. Ons wil eerstens net baie geluk sê, daar was een hele paar verjaarsta hierdie week, Derens Broek, Zack Lewis, Piet van der Merwe, Daisa Windsor en Nathan Christensen. En vandag Karen Oosthuizen. Baie geluk Karen, ons is so blij vir julle en ons bid die Heere sê sien oor hierdie jaar wat voorlee. Dit is vandag vir ons een groot voorrecht om die nachtmal te bedien, kry jou nachtmal gereed vir jou en jou familie op hierdie paas naweek. En ons focus en ons denke word gerig op wat Jesus vir ons aan die kruis gedoen het. Deer sy groot liefde en vir ons sondes het hy gesterwe, sê die Bijbel. En ons glo in hom en ons ontvang die gave van die eeuwige lewe en ook vergifnis. We also celebrate in this time the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Listen what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 15. Jesus died for everyone so that those who received his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. For you and me, it is Jesus gesterwe. Die Bijbel sê ook in hierdie gedeelte dat vir jou en my was hy opgewek. En waarom is dit alles gedoen? Die antwoord sê op die einde van die skrif gedeelte, so dat ons vir hom moet lewe. Ek wil vandag, soos ons die nachtmal doen, vir jou uitdaag en vraag, kom ons maak op niet vandag een nieuwe toewijding aan die Heere. En ons wij ons lewe op niet toe om vir hom te lewe, net soos die skrif sê, omdat hy vir ons gesterf het, en ook opgewek was uit die dood, die woord sê, ons hemelse vader het Jesus gestuur om op die kruis te sterf, was opgewek die derde dag, vroeg die ochend, so dat ons vir hom kan lewe. Kom ons kyk na ons toewijding vir hom, laat ons weer ons lewe op net toewij aan hom, en vir hom lewe in hierdie jaar wat voorlee. Net so het die Heere die brood geneem, en hy het gedank, en kom ons doen die selfde van ochend. Dit was sy lichaam wat vir ons gebreek was, gekruisig was, in hierdie tyd waar ons vier op paas naweer. En net so ook die beke na die brood, dit is die verbond van die nieuwe testament, die beloftes van die woord, dat ons een nieuwe lewe het, maar dat ons ook vandag aan die Heere belofte sal maak, dat ons aan hom toegeweid, aan hom behoort en vir hom sal lewe. Kom ons neem die beke. Kom ons bid saam. Vader, baie dankie vir hierdie wonderlijke gedachte, hierdie naweek specifiek, waar Jesus gekruisig was, wat ons vier tot sy gedachten is, ook sy opstanding. Help elkeen van ons om op niet vir u te lewe, op niet toegeweid aan u te wees, en soos ons die nachtmal neem vandag, is dit ons besluit. Lord, we make a decision to absolutely commit a new, a fresh unto you, and to serve you and to love you all the days of our lives. We love you and we thank you for this awesome gift, Christ our Savior on the cross. But further than that, Father, that you raised him from the dead. And because of that, we have eternal hope and we praise you for that. Amen. Baie dankie. Hier is Michelle vir ochend met die woord en geniet die rest van julle paas na week. Community Family Church and everybody joining us online. Thank you for joining us. It's a wonderful privilege to be ministering to you. So this morning I'll be sharing the word with you. We are kicking off part one of our five week series on the Easter challenge. And today our topic will be Easter evidence, the beautiful cross. So it might sound a bit strange, but we're going to unwrap it as we go. So in this, we are going to take a good look at the resurrection, seeing that today is a Resurrection Sunday. 
I do hope that you and your families have been enjoying this Easter weekend this, thus far. So um, let's get into today's message. Before we start, let us pray. Thank you, God, for just bringing to our remembrance everything that happened more than 2,000 years ago. It fills our heart with a little bit of sadness, but also with a lot of joy as we read the truth about this very special day that we are sharing as your children around the globe this morning. Thank you, God, for everything that you have done for us on the cross, even though we didn't deserve any of it. Thank you for your love that is shed abroad in our hearts, and we pray that your anointing will be on our message this morning, that every seed will fall on good ground and be much fruit in time to come. We love you, Lord. Amen. So I have this cross necklace. It's special to me because my husband bought it as a gift for me many years ago. But did you know in Roman times, wearing a cross like this around your neck, it would have been similar to wearing a pendant of an electric chair around your neck. Yeah, that's quite shocking, hey? It's true though, because in those days, the cross was the preferred method of putting somebody to death in those days. People would be hung on a cross publicly until they died. So a cross in those days had a very different meaning than what this cross might have when I wear it around my neck or your cross pendant on your bracelet or perhaps you have a cross as a bookmark in your Bible. So we're going to look at that in a few moments. So when I wear my cross, of course, the first thing that comes to mind is my husband because he gave it to me as a gift. So I think of him every time I wear it. But it's so much more than that. Whenever I wear it or look at it, it also reminds me of what Jesus did on the cross for me. Mark 16 verse 6 says, Don't be alarmed or afraid. He said, You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. So in wearing this cross, it reminds me also that the cross is empty. Jesus isn't on that cross anymore. And it reminds me that the tomb is empty. Jesus isn't in that grave anymore. He's alive. He has risen. And that is what we're celebrating today. Resurrection Sunday. It also reminds me of the day that I prayed and surrendered my life to Jesus. Um, I have shared my testimony with you before. It was in August of my matric year when I gave my heart to Jesus. Never looked back. That was the day that changed the rest of my life. So that was also the day when I became his child. The day that sin had no hold on me anymore. And it reminds me that I'm not here on earth alone, all by myself. It reminds me that there is somebody, the Bible says, that sticks closer than a brother. I have, the Bible calls Jesus my friend. He is my friend. He is your friend. We are not doing life alone. When he went to heaven, he sent the helper, the Holy Spirit, to us. So when we surrender our lives to Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives in us and we are never alone. This time of the year especially, um, there are lots of people in the world who feel a little bit lonely. Perhaps the family has gone off um, away for the long weekend, for the Easter holidays, and you have stayed at home and you are by yourself. But I'm bringing you the good news this morning that you are not alone. Jesus calls you his friend. He will never leave you. He will not forsake you. And all of this was made possible because of the resurrection. Hebrews 13 verse 5 to 6 says, For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The cross also reminds me that I'm strong. The Bible says, when I'm weak, 
then I am strong because of the power of Christ who lives on the inside of us. And you can go and read that in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 10. And this in a nutshell is what makes the cross so beautiful to me. So how does what happened more than 2,000 years ago impact our lives today? Obviously, it impacts our lives a whole lot. But let's think on these. On that day, Jesus took everything that was broken, that was ugly, that was cruel, that was harsh, and he made it beautiful again. The resurrection is transformation. Transformation simply means to change. Jesus takes one thing, which is our sinful nature, the ugly, and he changes it, and he transforms it, and he makes it beautiful again. The resurrection doesn't take away how hard, how cruel, how painful it must have been for Jesus on that cross. But it took that symbol of death. Remember, we said wearing a cross would have been equal to wearing an electric chair around your neck in today's times. So in the Roman times, a cross would have been a symbol of death. But Jesus took that symbol of death and he turned it into a symbol of life and salvation. This weekend, more than 2 billion people around the world celebrate resurrection, the resurrection of Christ. So let us take a look at two aspects of it. Number one, the reality of the event, and number two, the amazing, beautiful transformation that it brings. Jesus predicted his death and his resurrection. Read together with me in Mark 8 verse 31. 32 and it says he then began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders the chief priests and the teachers of the law and that he must be killed and after three days rise again he spoke plainly about it and peter took him aside and began to rebuke him jesus's resurrection proves all of jesus's words were true and it proves that his sacrifice for our sins accomplished its work. Since Jesus rose from the grave, we know that all who believe in him will be raised from the dead as well. Paul told us in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 17 to 21 and it says, And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man and resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. Resurrection is the proof that all Jesus did and said is true. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, we have salvation. John 14 verse 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Therefore, this Resurrection Sunday, we have great confidence in both the truth and the power of Jesus' resurrection. This did come at great cost. And this also is another ugly reality that had a beautiful result. In the years after Jesus' ascension, the disciples faced persecution and rejection. Acts 12 verse 2 tells us the Apostle James was killed by the sword. That's rough. Many apostles were stoned and crucified, dying for their faith. They all faced tremendous persecution for the belief in Jesus' resurrection. Therefore, Peter, James, the other James, and Paul knowingly and willingly died at the hands of various rulers for what they believed and witnessed with their own eyes. Proclaiming the resurrection of Jesus didn't make them famous. It did not bring them power. It didn't bring them status. Rather, it cost them everything. And it is there in that we find this beautiful aspect of this reality. What a beautiful transformation had come about in the hearts of the disciple because of the certainty of the resurrection. 
you might remember that before the resurrection, Peter was too scared to admit to a servant girl that he even knew Jesus. After the resurrection, Peter pro proclaimed the truth of Jesus, not just to one slave girl, but to thousands of men and women. In Acts 4, Peter and John spoke boldly about Jesus. We told in verse 13, when the high priest and leaders saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. The beauty of the resurrection is in the transformation that it brings. Peter and John was changed by it. Thousands of people around the world have been transformed by it. Today, you can be transformed by it. At that moment, when the resurrection comes into our hearts, we are transformed by it. We are crucified with Christ. Every other moment is transformed from being stuck and being bound by the things of this earth to being freed and prepared for the things of heaven. Not only does the forgiving and healing power of the resurrection reach out into every day of our future, it also reaches back into every day of your past. To take part in the resurrection is to believe in the cross. In that belief, Jesus takes all our sin, all our failures and all our mistakes and makes us beautiful again. If we take part in the resurrection, even our greatest failures in the past is being transformed completely and totally. At the cross, Jesus forgives and redeems our very, very worst moments. And even our sins are transformed into victory. In the resurrection, your deepest regrets are transformed from unbearable shame to proclamation of God's amazing grace, His mercy and His love. In the resurrection, you and I can say, God loves, God uses, God draws near to, and God protects and God helps people who have even done things like the very worst we've done. My failure is no longer my shame. It has been transformed into my story of how good God is even when I'm not. How powerful His love can be even when we are unloving. How far His grace reaches when we fail. How completely He can change the way a person thinks, the way a person lives, and even who a person is. Before the crucifixion, every one of the 12 disciples deserted Jesus. They ran away. After the resurrection, every one of the 11 remaining disciples proclaimed boldly the message of his death and of his resurrection. Something happened in them that can only be explained by their first-hand witness of the resurrection and the work that the Holy Spirit was doing in their lives. If you have not experienced the transformative power of um, the resurrection in your life, then today is your day. If you have already put your faith in the resurrection of Jesus, then today is the day for you to move forward in His power to make you bold and to make you free. Through the resurrection, the tomb is transformed into a symbol of hope. Now this gold tomb has become to us a symbol of hope, but also a symbol of life. Hope is now found in the tomb because Jesus was not found in the tomb. He died for our sins and three days later, he rose from the dead and that changes everything. Clarence Hall said, the resurrection of Jesus changes the face of death for all his people. Death is no longer a prison, but a passage into God's presence. Easter says you can put truth in a grave, but it won't stay there. Therefore, without the resurrection, death is the tragic ending to life. 
with the resurrection, death is just the beginning of eternal life. It is where our eternal glory begins. Paul encourages us in Colossians 3 verse 1 to 4. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. And that change is complete. Watchman Lee said, Our old history ends with a cross. Our new history begins with a resurrection. This may be the most precious and amazing transformation the resurrection brings. The resurrection makes us new. Will you enter into the resurrection today? If you have already done so, will you choose to live every day in the freedom, the joy, the hope of the resurrection? In God, there is no deception. There is no corruption. To be human means to be separate from God in need of forgiveness, in need of transformation. That can be found only in the resurrection if we want to be with God and in His presence. The crucifixion closes the gap that our sinful nature creates. And God loves you so much that he made a way for you. Jesus extended the invitation to the resurrection to anyone who will put their faith in him. He didn't make it too hard for us. In Romans 10 verse 9, Paul said, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. If you don't want him on this earth, he won't force you to be with him in heaven forever. The choice is still yours. If you don't want to accept his invitation, he won't force you to do it. To take his invitation is to lay down your pride and the weakness of your humanity and to be transformed by the resurrection. It is to let the righteousness of Jesus make you right. Look to the goodness of God to make you good. Look to the forgiveness of the cross to make you whole. Let the power of the resurrection make you free. He doesn't want you to just be good. He wants you to be forgiven so that you can be near. So let us look back to where we began this morning. The cross that some of us wear around our neck or on our wrists as a charm or have as a bookmark. These symbols remind us that it is God's heart to take all of that which is dark, which is hard, which is broken, which is hurting, and to resurrect it into something beautiful. Looking at the cross now, we can see the beauty of the cross. We can see in it the grace that Jesus shows us. Now the cross is a symbol of hope and a symbol of life. And we can see it as a beautiful cross. I want to give you the opportunity to join on the resurrection this morning, right now, because I want for your soul to be beautiful and to be free. I hope that you will experience what it means to have your most ugly moments transformed into a story of God's forgiveness, of His love and of His grace. That change begins with a prayer, but that doesn't end there. I want you to know that by praying this prayer, you want to live in the resurrection for all your life and through eternity. It means that you will ask Jesus to forgive your sins and to guide your life. When you make this decision through this prayer, your life will be changed, whether you feel it or not. You will be forgiven and you will be a child of God. But it's not the end. It's the beginning of a lifelong transformation where the resurrection works deeper and deeper in your heart as it comes out through your life. Whether you pray that right now for the first time or whether you've prayed this prayer years ago, 
I want to challenge you to come back and join us at church next week so that together we can take that next step in your journey. So if that's the journey that you want to begin, if you want to accept God's invitation, pray this resurrection prayer with me. I will lead you and then you can repeat after me. So please close your eyes. Dear God, I admit that I have done some ugly things. I ask for forgiveness for my sin. Thank you that Jesus paid the price on the cross for me. I put my faith in Jesus. I ask Jesus into my heart. I am ready to take part in your resurrection. Fill me with your Holy Spirit as I give my life to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now let us know that you have prayed this prayer and made Jesus the Lord of your life. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. The angels in heaven is throwing a party on your behalf right now. And don't leave it there. Get connected. Join in with one of our life groups on a Wednesday or Thursday night. And become part of the serving teams at church. Find your place in the body. Get involved in our church family and grow with us. It has been so great spending time with you this morning, this beautiful Resurrection Sunday. Join us again next week and Chris will be ministering, continuing on the Easter Challenge um, week two. And he'll minister on the need for church life against the ropes. We love you. Have a super and a blessed Easter weekend and Easter time. And remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. We love you. Bye.